Hey everybody, Anthony here. We're going to do an update today on a knife that I sent up to a YouTube friend. Uh, those of you know, I've done one other review or unboxing of some work that he's done for me. His name is Gavku. I'll put his link at the bottom in the description box at the end of this video. But uh, what I did was I had a Gerber um, knife, which is right here. Uh, this is the BMF, which I bought. I believe it was the mid-1980s uh, when this knife was produced. And I'll go over some of the features of the knife a little, in a little bit. But this is the original sheath that the knife came with uh, when it came out. It has a sharpener built in, had a compass, and this little pouch here. It had, uh, you know, Alice clips or a clip for your belt here that you could, you know, unclip and put it through your belt or on a pack, some gear. It's a pretty well thought out sheath. However, over the years sitting around in the sheath, the knife rusted. And so I wanted to start using it again, but not in this original sheath. So I called on Gavku and he um, had done another knife for me, uh, my Rat 3 knife, uh, which he made a, a Kydex sheath for. And so I sent him this one and here's what he came up with. This is a gunmetal gray, uh, sheath that he designed uh, for this knife. I asked him to put a, <clears throat> I think this is a 3 8 inch fire steel holder for a larger fire steel. So he attached that uh, piece as well. And then since this was a, a knife that's over 12 inches, uh, I didn't think a, a tech lock uh, would work on it, and neither did Gafku. He, he figured the Molly straps would be a better choice. And I think they are. And uh, these are the Molly straps attached to the uh, back of the Kydex. And uh, I, I actually wore this on my belt uh, the other day. And it, it works fine on a belt or attaching to a vest or attaching to a pack. So I've got a lot of options with this, um, with this Kydex. And the knife uh, fits in there great. Uh, let's take a look and show you. Okay, the knife fits in perfect. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, he just did a fantastic job, and I thought uh, I'd give him a shout out today and um, get this video out there. And for those of you on YouTube that haven't, uh, you know, sent him any uh, knives to make sheaths for, he makes a bunch of different uh, sheaths for almost any knife you have. You just have to send it to him, unless he already has the that knife then he can make the the sheath for you without you sending the knife but um, just a real great guy does some good work and I think he's definitely going to be um, someone to talk about in the future in the knife world uh, he's just doing some really cool stuff and he's got the best accent on YouTube that I think and so um, I'm just going to go over a couple of the specs on this knife and a little bit of history on it because it is a, a sort of a collector knife for me and uh, for many out there in the knife world also. Be right back. Guys are back. As I said before, this knife is the uh, Gerber BMF. Uh, I believe it stands for basic multifunction survival knife. Uh, it's got a low uh, serial number and I looked up. Uh, I think it's around 1986, uh, this knife. It's this the first year it was produced. And I bought it, uh, I, when I lived in New York, I think I bought it in uh, Greenwich, Connecticut when I bought my um, one of my guns. But um, it's a 13 inch overall uh, size knife. It's, um, let's see, it was produced by a man by the name of Brad Parrish uh, who began his career at Gerber in 1974. He's, he's uh, apparently has designed a lot of other knives uh, for Gerber. Um, some of them being the BMF, the LMF, the Magnum LST, the Magnum Junior, the Pro Guide Series, the Gator, the Gator Mate, the Easy Out Access, uh, and, a, and a bunch of others. He's, his, his work has resulted in multiple design patents. In 1994, the Gerber catalog has a color photo of Brad on page 3. Um, again, this knife was uh, really appealing to me back then. And... Um, it's, I think it's a, 
8 inch blade ground from a quarter inch thick high carbon surgical stainless steel with Rockwell hardness of C54 to 55. They purposely lowered the hardness on this. Um, they purposely lowered the hardness for several points to increase the toughness. The chisel tooth saw that you see right here, some really thick chisel tooth. A lot of might not appeal to a lot of people, but I guess back then it was pretty cool design. Uh, result of countless experiments until they knew it was just right. It's designed for aggressive cutting of wood <clears throat> and other materials. The blade and stainless steel guards. There you go. The blade and stainless steel guards and butt cap are treated with a non-reflective finish. The butt cap is specifically designed to endure heavy pounding and is firmly attached to the length, length blade, the full length blade tang. Most uh, composition cushions the hand. Uh, it's called a DuPont Hypalon is what this cushiony material is called that you grip in your hands. It almost feels like a sponge. It's called DuPont Hypalon. It's a semi-soft composition, cushions the hand during heavy use, and provides a comfortable positive grip. Each BMF is hand adjusted so that the point of balance is approxim approximately at the front guard, which makes it a comfortable to use even during extended periods of heavy usage. Uh, so just some quick specs on the knife. Um, for those of you out there, I believe it's got a clip point. Uh, Gavku took all the rust off it, sharpened it up for me, and uh, so now I have it, and I'm going to uh, uh, start to carry it. Uh, definitely, it's going to be with uh, in one of my uh, uh, backpacks, one of my go bags, EDC bags, um, and so there you have it. Uh, again, uh, Gavku uh, did the sheath work on it, some sharpening, and some work on the blade. Uh, so check them out, you guys, if you haven't already. Uh, speak very highly of him, and he's getting uh, very popular up there in the um, in the YouTube world. Okay, it's Anthony signing off. Take care.